Studying for exams is hard, and it's made even harder when we don't utilize effective study strategies backed by evidence-based research that shows proven ways to improve exam results. The strategy I wanna talk about today is spaced repetition. In today's video, I'm gonna highlight what spaced repetition is, why it's valuable to understand and utilize this in your study routine, some evidence-based studies that support this, and ultimately how you can utilize it into your day-to-day -day studying. So, let's get into it. So, what is spaced repetition? Essentially, it just involves spacing out your study sessions for each topic strategically so that we can optimize and maximize our retention of information for the long term. We utilize this so that we can combat something known as the forgetting curve theory. The forgetting curve is basically a theory on how we forget content. If new information isn't retained and isn't restudied, we'll forget it, I know. Groundbreaking stuff, right? Our steepest decline and loss of memory retention is within the first couple hours to a day after learning new information. That's why when you've just come out of a lecture at uni and you're full of all this great information that you've just learned, within just a couple hours or by the end of the day, you remember absolutely none of it. From the moment we learn something new, this forgetting curve is playing a continuous tug of war between retention and forgetting, which is why it's so crucial to relearn and restudy new information sooner rather than later so that we can combat this initial steep decline in retention. So for example, say if you learn something new, right? And then within two days, the forgetting curve goes all the way down to zero and you've completely forgotten it. So what do you do? Well, after learning it, you then relearn the content the day after. That way the curve resets, goes right up to the top and starts all over again and then it might decline in like say seven days. So you'd relearn it three days later and it would reset again. And then that way it might not decline for say, you know, 14 days, right? So then you'd relearn it a week later and it would reset and it would continue again to decline ever so slowly and so on and so on and you get the picture. <laughs> Therefore, you'd think it'd be pretty safe to assume that this is the most effective way to optimize your ability to retain information for the long term. However, stick around and I'll explain to you what I actually discovered while researching spaced repetition during study. If you're not interested in anything else and you just wanna jump straight to that point, head to the start of study two, where I go over and outline what I discovered and how this could actually change the way you use spaced repetition while studying for exams. And as always, throughout all of this, we will be using active recall to study because it is the most effective way that we can study for exams. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out my video up here where I outline what active recall is, the studies that prove it is the most effective way to study for exams, and how you can use it to improve your exam scores. Space repetition is actually quite a valuable theory to understand because it gives us the ability to optimize our study routine to ensure that we are getting the maximum long-term retention as opposed to simply cramming for an exam and then forgetting all that content within the week. This way we are less stressed we study more effectively, we learn more, and evidently do better on exams. And if we're doing better on exams, therefore we are less stressed, we have more free time, we can study more effectively, and <laughs> you get the picture. Anyway, enough dilly dally, let's get straight into the studies that support space repetition. All right, so getting straight into the first study that I wanted to talk about today, what they tried to do is that they tried to model an equation to actually measure the rate of forgetfulness. So what they actually discovered was that retention rate follows an inverted U-shaped curve, which translated to this one key piece of information. And it was the conclusion that mass practice does not improve retention rate. If the information is still in the learner's short-term memory, then restudying and relearning does not improve long-term retention. Therefore, stating that studying needs to be undertaken a certain time frame past the point where you can't recall the information effectively, thus making it harder to recall and study the information. But that's exactly what we want because the harder we have to work to recall the information, the stronger the link becomes between the neurons in our brain, therefore making it easier 
to recall the information in the future. All right, friends, if you're getting value out of this video, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe down the bottom because it really, really does support the channel and allows me to continue making more videos. All right, let's get straight into study two. Now, remember how I mentioned that I'd explain what I'd found out about how to effectively use spaced repetition in your studying? Well, that piece of information directly relates to this study right now. The biggest takeaway from this study was that it did not matter if you gradually increased the spacing between each study sessions for your topic. So if you went, for example, two days, five days, eight days, 12 days, or if you had a set spaced interval between each study session. So it was every four days you would study your content. What matters is that you actually space the content appropriately and maintain consistency. How the experiment was undertaken was that they had three groups. One group was to gradually increase the time between each spaced restudy sessions. The second group had a set block of time between each space study period. So for example, that might be every four days. And then they had one group that did not space their restudy and simply had mass repetition of cramming before the retesting period. And all groups obviously had the same testing period. Now, when comparing the test results for each group at the end of the study, they found that the two groups that undertook spaced repetition compared to the mass repetition cramming group actually had a 200% increase in long-term retention of the facts. Absolutely mind-blowing, right? However, and as I touched on before, the particular way that each restudy session was spaced did not affect the overall retention. Basically meaning that neither group that used spaced repetition outperformed the other. This would appear to be good news for students, educators, and researchers alike all interested in implementing spaced repetition into their study routine. And that's because it all leads to one straightforward conclusion. And that is that increasing the absolute spacing of retrieval attempts has clear value for learning. However, the way that the information is spaced relative to one another may not be critical. Bad news, I'm afraid. This, however, did further the claim that cramming for tests is not an effective way of studying and retaining long-term information. Now, this study did actually find one interesting little piece of information. That was that if you are going to cram, they found that through retrieving information multiple times without spacing had just as little effect as simply recalling the information once. So I'm not telling you not to cram for your exams. I'm telling you to cram smarter. So if you are going to cram for your exams, recall it once and then maybe recall it a second time before going to bed and save yourself a little bit of time as opposed to constantly repeating it a hundred times throughout the day. So the best way that I've found to optimize space repetition into our study routines is to create some sort of study organizational system. Basically, this means just breaking up your study into topics and then reviewing them each day. After you've reviewed them and re-studied them, you'd then color code them based on how hard they were. So if it was really easy, you'd give it a green. And that would mean that you probably don't study it for say seven days. If it was pretty difficult, you'd probably give it an orange or a yellow. And that means that you'll restudy it in two or three days time. And if you really struggled and didn't know it at all, give it a red and you wanna either restudy it later that day or first thing tomorrow. And of course, the aim is to get every category green. If you are struggling to maintain this system or you just don't think it'll be the right fit for you and you don't really think it'll work, another much simpler, much easier way to go about it is to simply ask yourself each day, if the exam was tomorrow, what would I not want on the exam. That way you know exactly what you need to study today and then you can just continue that every day until you sit the exam and you should be all set. If you've enjoyed this video and you've got a lot out of it, make sure to check out my playlist that I've made just for you that outlines how best to study for exams based by evidence-based study tips and how you can use them to improve your study routine and ultimately perform better on exams. If you enjoyed this video and you got a lot out of it, as usual, make sure to hit that like and subscribe down the bottom so you don't miss when I upload my next video. Feel free to leave a comment down below about what study strategies you use and maybe a request for a video that you'd like me to cover in the future. All right, that's us for today, guys. Until next time, see ya.